um, dive too much in today, I, I want to pick up where last week's video was, and he, he ended the video talking about starting with um, the big dream, the big idea, the directions from God, and one piece of wood. And I've done that. I've done that a few times with, in a spiritual sense with many things, but I've also done it literally with building a boat. And I, I had a couple pictures to share with you. Yeah, oh yes, Paula. Do we have those photos of the uh, one piece of wood? There we go. See, this, the boat that I refer to was actually built right here, and it actually did begin with one piece of wood. Those strips are cedar and the panels and the internal ribs are all plywood. And these were exactly what the designer, Richard Woods, in England uh, said to do. And so you get that one plan, and you get some wood. And I think we have some more. The next picture. And you just follow instructions. So it's now wrapped in plywood. And then that plywood was wrapped in fiberglass. And here we're transporting it, I can't even remember where, <laughs> but we did. And then the next video, or next slide, and then you get the finished product, okay? <laughs> yeah. You get the finished product just by following instructions. And I, I did that a lot as a kid. I, I worked plastic models, and you would get that kit. I did some wood as well, and you would get that kit. I was so excited that and a little bit of glue and sometimes some paint and you would follow those instructions and you would get a nice product at the end and and that's exactly where that product I, Edgar and I actually slept in that boat that's docked there that's in uh, Lake Atitlan at um, somebody help me what, where were we Edgar anyway it's where it, it's on the left side of the lake as you face it from Pana but that's uh it works. It works. One piece of wood and some instructions. And that's what we hear as God directed Noah. And that he actually followed those instructions. His, he actually did as the Lord commanded him. And he was able to uh, finish in 120 years this incredible boat. Today's video, though, as we just watched, was a bit more somber because finally, after 120 years of building this boat, that there was actually a need for a boat, a boat of this size, a boat that would be an ark, an ark of safety for those that would enter. And it was only to be Noah and his children and their wives and the animals that he directed. This perfect storm, after a long-term plan of 120 years with specific details, and I shared with you last week, 1 Peter 3.20, that during this entire period, God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. He waited patiently. It's being built. Noah begins with one piece of wood, and he follows these instructions, and he's building this out. And, and he's a man, as, as I told you in part one of this series, that he was righteous, Scripture says, he was righteous, and he was blameless among the people of the day. And he walked with God. And from walking with God, there was great favor upon his life. This is the Noah that is following instructions. This is Noah who is the long-term plan. Let me share with you today from Genesis chapter 7, and some of this was in the video, but I I'll, I'll just want to read the first 12 verses together. The Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Let me pause there in verse 1, because this is a key point. He has found Noah righteous in this generation. It's a generation where the, the inclination of the heart of man is evil. God has surveyed the scene, God has surveyed the population and made this determination, and yet said there is one. There is one still walking with God. And that's how we get to this story today. But it, it is possible then to walk with God and not go with the flow of culture, not go with the flow of 
all of, of everything the world is doing, but go actually against that and be set apart and be known as one who is blameless among the people. If you were Noah's neighbor, you would know him to be blameless. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. He's a good neighbor. He's the one you like. Where your other neighbors, you don't trust so much. You know that if they can do you out of it of the deal, they're probably going to do it. We continue. Verse 2. Take with you seven of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and two of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds and of all creatures that move along the ground, male and female, get this, came to Noah and entered the ark as God had commanded Noah. And after the seven days, the flood waters came on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of the heavens were opened and rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. I love, again in verse 1, that Noah was found righteous in this generation. He had received instructions from the Lord to prepare this ark, and his response was consistent, as indicated in verse 5. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded. Everything he heard from the Lord, everything he knew to do, he did it. What a great uh, testimony to the life of Noah that this could be said, that he did all that the Lord commanded him. What if that could be said of you and I? That we at least strived to do all that the Lord commanded us. We heard from him, and as Amy just said, we heard, and, and, but sometimes don't we struggle with obedience? We hear, but Lord, can you give me something else to hear? Lord, could you give me the next thing to hear? Because that last one was way too difficult. And that, for a lot of us, that's where spiritual growth stops. That's where it stops. Because God reveals to you what you are to do, and then you choose whether you're going to be obedient or not. And it may be as simple as, I need you to go to this person, and, and you need to apologize. And, well, I'm not going to do that. What, what would be the next thing, Lord? Right? God instructs us, and God reveals to us, and, and we think, well, that, yeah, that, but that's so small, and it must be for somebody else. Give me something big, God. And yet, we hear about Noah that he did all that the Lord commanded of him. That's a great place to be. Genesis chapter 6 and 7, and a man is walking with God, righteous, blameless, obedient. Obedient. It is difficult to be obedient in all circumstances and in all things. The spiritual direction to hear from the Lord. God communicates to us today. We've been hearing about that for a month or more as we've talked about listening to the voice of God, the sheep and his shepherd, the relationship that we can have with God in this new covenant opportunity that we have to be people who are known to be righteous, where God communicates to us how this relationship is going to work. And then we choose what we do with that. We choose and we consider. And for some of us, we've said yes, and yeah, we may not be perfect, but we're, we're walking with God, we're, we're listening to His voice. We may get stuck on some points 
of obedience, but we're trying to walk with Him. Others, you hear the message about how that we can walk in relationship with God and you consider it and you, you choose to wait. You choose to say, well, that's not something I want in my life right now. I'm not ready to surrender my life to God. I'm not ready to walk with Jesus. And maybe you hang around a little bit and you hang around with some good people or you've got some great parents, but you yourself, truth be told, publicly or perhaps even just privately, you are not walking with God. You have chosen to not follow Him. You have chosen to ignore His instructions and His directions. And, and, and as, I, I, as I soak on that this week, as I think about this week, and why would that be? Why would we hear from God? Why would we know that He loves us? Why would we know that He has a great plan? Why, why would we know that he, he wants us to walk with Him and surrender our life to Him, and yet we choose not to? We know He is the best way and the best plan and the best purpose for our life, and yet we choose willfully to not walk with Him. Why would that be? What I've come down to is we must think that we have a lot more time. We must think that the flood is not coming. We must think that we have a lot more life. That's all I could come up with. If you've got more, message me later. But that's what I came up with this week. Why would one wait? If you know, if you understand, and yet you don't. And I'm I tried to think of that from, from the perspective even of being the neighbor of Noah. I would wonder after some time, wow, that's a lot of wood. That's a lot of pitch. That's a really big boat. What is my neighbor doing? Perhaps I would go even to talk to Noah and say, well, Noah, what, what is this? I, I know that you, perhaps as his neighbor, I know that he walks with God, perhaps I, you know, I, I know his reputation. I can trust him. He's blameless. There appears to be favor in his life. Maybe, maybe Noah tells me as his neighbor, well, I'm building this ark because this is what God's told me to do. Maybe I get some information. You, you get information and you decide what you want to do with that information. Noah followed his instructions this ark he was building was only for the animals that God brought to the ark. It was only for him and his family. We get that. But surely there was something to be said of seeing this monster be built and wondering what is up. But the, the, the overall assessment is everything that lived, everything that breathed air perished because of this flood. When I see here that and I'm thinking of the instructions that Noah received in preparation for this great flood. And the boat building, it didn't intimidate me as much because I've done that. A much smaller scale, yes, but I've done that. But thinking about trying to gather all these animals up. I mean, I'm not a hunter, guys. I love to eat meat, but I'd rather it just be served on my plate. And to think about going and trying to cage a bear or something like that. I, 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 how's that all work? You know, and, and, and as a planner, I'd be thinking through, and that would be the one that would get me. And then once we gather them, and then we've got to feed them, and then we've got to you know, clean up the mess, all that stuff. But thinking about the animal piece, and, and, and let me tell you, I, I tend to do that all the time. I hear from the Lord, I want to walk in obedience. In the planning part, I begin to think about all the things that must be done and all the needs that must come together, and I tend to overthink it. I'm still trying to walk in obedience, but I'm losing some sleep, honestly, because I'm thinking so much, and I'm trying to figure it all out, and maybe Noah was the same, but here he builds the ark, and the animals start coming to him. And I thought about how often 
I've experienced the same thing. What I fretted about, what I thought about, and God already had worked out. And I thought maybe somebody here might need to hear that today. That you too are a great planner. You too, you hear from the Lord. And you too maybe overthink some things. And maybe what you're overthinking, God has already got mapped out and planned out for you. That's good news for me. Maybe it is for somebody else here today. God has it worked out. Where God has called you, where God has guided you, He will provide for you. He is leading you in that direction. And so you trust Him and not try to overthink, not try to over, over figure everything out. So I've written that down because I want, you know, I've, I've carried that for almost 57 years. I'd like for the next season to kind of be reminded of the, the animals coming to the ark. I don't have to do everything. I don't have to do it all. So rain falls 40 days and 40 nights. And I want to drop down for a moment, verse 21 and 22. Every living thing that moved on earth perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. I heard the story occasionally as a child, and I, I would ask my grandmother, and she was often the one that was sharing the story with me, and she would talk about Noah, and it, you know, it, it just frightened me. I, I, I remember not being able to swim. I did not have swimming lessons until later, and I knew, well, if water came, I, you know, I might be one of those things that you, there's no air, and, and we often had flooding in our area where I grew up. There were the, it would rain, and it would rain for what seemed like a week, and, and, the, and the, the waterways, the creeks and rivers would rise, and you would have flood waters. And I remember one time we were surrounded by water. We could not drive to the main road. We could not drive for food. There was water all around us. And my grandmother, we would ask about this, and she would say, well, God has promised He's not going to flood the earth again. He's not going to... Uh, flood the entire earth again. There, there will not be judgment in that way. And we'll talk about that more next week. But still it frightened me. Because I was hearing and beginning to understand the story of God. How to have relationship with Him. I did not know how to do a next step. But it was concerning to me because I heard the information. And I wanted to be able to respond to the heart of God. And, and when I see here is that there was a deadline. It came. God was patient. 120 years, God was patient. And I know God's been patient in my life. God's been patient in your life. But eventually, what he says will happen, it happens. And it was a surprise to the neighbors of Noah. When it began to rain, and it didn't stop, and the creeks began to rise, and it continued to rain. And they, at some point, began to wonder, we may be in trouble here. And that's what happened. I've missed a lot of deadlines in my life. When I knew it was coming. I had the information. And, and I didn't take action. And I want to I turn back the clock a little bit because, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, I think I missed more deadlines then than I do now. Because some of you can't relate to a world that you do not get an email notification, a text reminder that your calendar that you have an event on, you have information, you know when the deadline is. I still miss some of those. But back in the 70s and 80s when you had to wait three to five days for postage and handling and delivery, uh, I missed some deadlines. One that I missed... and. And this happened with more than one sport, but I re remembered this week, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't always this big, <laughs> and I, I was actually much smaller, but finally I, I began to grow a little bit, and I wanted to play football. But I knew there was a deadline. There was a deadline to go to camp, a deadline to go to tryouts, and I got busy doing some other things. And there was no, there was no watch to remind me, there was no, no beeper, no phone, no Google Calendar, 
And I was busy with some other things. And we, I remember even talking about it with some of my friends. And we all missed it. <laughs> because it just wasn't really important enough. It really wasn't a priority. It really wasn't even a huge surprise because we knew when the deadline was. And yet I've still missed many deadlines in life. And yet I know that there is also a deadline coming because while God is not going to flood the earth again in judgment, there is going to be judgment. This life ends at some point. Jesus, Jesus said it this way in Matthew 24, verse 37. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Here's what else we know. Where are we at? Verse uh, 42. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Jesus, who came to introduce a new covenant, a new way, so that we could all walk in righteousness, we could choose to, because of what Jesus did on the cross. That it, the same that is said of Noah could be said of us, that, that we are righteous, not because of what we have done, but because of what Jesus has done. Righteous because of Him. We can also be blameless among the people because, because we walk with Christ. We can also have a good reputation because we, we, we do what we say we're going to do. We try to do the right thing. We try to treat others right. We try to love our neighbor. This new covenant relationship. We can walk with God. We can see His favor on our life because we choose to go not the direction of current and not the direction of the world, but we can walk actually with God. And it may be completely different from the way everything else is going. This week, in fact, incredible. I think even right now, this morning, I'm praying for friends in Louisiana. Terrible storm headed that way. Crazy things going on in Afghanistan and around the world today. It is a world where you also could say that it was just like in the days of Noah, or at least I think so. It's a day where there is much evil in the world, and you and I navigate that and make decisions in that, and it's easy to be swept away and go the same direction as everybody else when God's voice to us is no we're not going to do this because that doesn't honor me, but we're, because you say you walk with me, my, the Holy Spirit, the voice of God, the direction of His Word, direct us to walk away and go in a completely different way. Obedience, as Amy just said. That's what it looks like. It's often not making the decision that's so popular with everyone else, but being willing like Noah to stand apart and be different. To honor God first. We make this hard decisions just like that. Because we know, just as Jesus said, that it's going to be like this. We don't know. we got to keep watch. Because we don't know on what day the Lord will come. But things are in place. Have been for a while. How long will God be patient? Just as he was in the days of Noah. Will anybody in this room be caught off guard and be surprised? Because you heard the same information, just as I have all my life. You knew that there was a deadline coming, and you choose to play games. You choose to go your way. You, cho you chose to ignore the walk of obedience. And all of a sudden, it's just like it was in the days of Noah. That can happen. And that's not what God wants. 
And God sends messengers. It's not just His judgment that's coming. It is everybody in this room. Our life ends too, guys. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not. Come, Lord Jesus. I fear not death. Because he says there's more to this life. But he also says, seek him while he may be found. Isaiah 55, verse 6 and 7. To seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on, his, on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the righteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, he will freely pardon See, God gives us this time and space, this time and this space where we hear and we clearly know. I thought this morning, my goodness, Lord, as I prayed over this message, this is, seems, seems so simple. And what I heard from the Lord is, that's exactly what I want you to deliver today. There will be no excuses in this room. You know the voice of God. You know what His Word ask of you and how his spirit guides you and you know whether your life lines up that whether you you are a child of God walking in the righteousness supplied by Jesus or not you know your life you know he's coming again you know it will be just like the days of Noah and what do we do with that 2 Peter 3.9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Everyone to come to repentance. That's the heartbeat of God. That is the will of God for your life. That is God's will. That's a way to pray. God, I know you don't want anyone to perish. So God, help me today to be able to communicate the, the, the simplicity of your word today. That we may respond in obedience today. That's my prayer today over this place. What kind of righteousness are you talking about, Fontaine? You know, I'm a pretty good person. Well, let, let, let me explain what, what is not good about being pretty good. Romans 3.22 the Apostle Paul says that this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. To all who believe, there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Any righteousness, any, any goodness, it's only possible and available to us to the work of Jesus on the cross that's it no other way no other serve Saturday no other serving yesterday thank you for all that did grateful for serving love to do works love to impact the community love to be for Guatemala but what's good is that that is an expression of goodness that comes through relationship with Jesus and nowhere else Nothing but his work on the cross. See, he is our ark today. Our video talked about the storms of life and the storms do come. Storms come. And I've lived long enough that they come again and again. It's like a wave. They keep coming. There are many storms in this life. And ultimately, there will be a storm that I, I, I will pass from this life unless Jesus comes back before, I, before that time. And that's quite possible. But if I pass from this life, He is my ark of safety in this life while I live. I walk with God. If I did not walk with God, I would have great fear. I should be afraid. I should be afraid in this life. I should be afraid in eternity. But today I have no fear. And it's not because of anything I've done. It's because of the God who loves me and the God who loves you and the God who redeems you. 
and says, walk with me. Obey me. Turn from sinful ways. Do not walk with the current of the crowd. But repent of sin. Repent of your sin. Walk with me in obedience. Hear my voice. Seek him while he may be found. Our ark of safety today. See, Jesus did this. He, he gave his life for ours. He took our sin upon him. Our guilt, our sin, our shame, he took it upon himself. He died. He went to the cross and he shed his blood and he died. He was buried. But that's not the end of the story. Three days later, he rose again. Victory over death, hell, and the grave. The resurrected Jesus. That's who we, that's who we worship today. He says, I, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe that? The resurrected Jesus. He is everything. He is our ark. And we can walk with him. We can have relationship with him. But see, I can't make that decision for you. And I just sense in my spirit that, that there are some walking in a round and perhaps in the sound of my voice and it is not true about you. You are not walking with Him. And He has given you time and space to change that. That you too might not walk in any fear because you walk with Jesus. And you know that He is the resurrection and that He is the life. I urge you. I urge you because you have a soul. And God has delivered a message to you. God has communicated to you that He wants you to walk with Him in absolute obedience and surrender. And perhaps you're wrestling with that wrestling because you want to go this way. You're, you're enjoying the party. You're enjoying the fun. You're enjoying, and you know it's disobedience, and maybe it's your secret life. I don't know. But God's saying, come home to me. Whether you've ever done that before, or whether maybe you did that years ago, and you're just kind of playing a game right now, and God is saying the time is near, your time and opportunity is now. I welcome you with open arms. That's the simplicity of the gospel. Nothing you have ever done is so bad that you can't come home, that his grace doesn't extend to you. But you have to choose. And no one here can do that for you. Mom and dad can't and no one else can. But you can experience an ark of safety today. And his name is Jesus. I'm going to pray over you guys today. Will you stand with me? As we pray today, and I, I'm, going to, I'm going to walk out from here, and I'm going to go into that area up on the porch. It says gallery. It's not super huge. But if you are here today, and you've never said yes to Jesus. I'm not talking about a religious experience. I'm talking about the relationship that is offered to you through Jesus Christ. That is all. I, I, I don't have opportunity today to for anything else because I believe there are some here today that want to say yes to Jesus. If that's you, that's the prayer that I'm going to pray in that gallery in just a few minutes. Or maybe you've walked with him, you've walked around church, and it's, or maybe you were even, it was better at one point. And God's calling you out of whatever you've been walking in. Then you can come too. I, if you need someone to pray with you, come to the gallery today. But this is only for that purpose. Father, thank
thank you today. I thank you that you are present. And that we may seek you and find you because you are near. Holy Spirit, I need you today. I need you to do your work today. We can open our hearts and our minds to you as an active ingredient. That there's a trinity. Holy Spirit, you're here to gently instruct us, gently to lead us, but to show us. You confirm in hearts and minds right now that what I'm saying is true. And people knowing that, and people making choices in response to that. And I pray, Holy Spirit, you have your way in this place today. May you be central in our hearts, our minds, our walk, the resurrected Jesus, the reality of walking with you in this life. Above all else, may you be supreme in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. We would love for you to check out our worship series right now. If you have time, you can find it here on Facebook or you can find it on YouTube. So we really encourage you to check that out and go spend some time in worship with us today. We have a lot going on here at Access Church. So make sure that you stay connected with us throughout the week on all of our social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, again, YouTube. So make sure you are following us so that you can stay updated and stay connected with us here at Access Church. And as always, we would love to see you someday here in person at Access Church San Cristobal. Have a great week, everyone.